Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God. Beloved people of God, we want to thank God for this special day. It's a special day because on this day, the Lord taught his disciple a very special, special way of administering service to each other. And we pray that as we go through the service today, the Lord will reveal to us ways on how to serve even better in Jesus' name. For our friends and brothers joining us online, the Lord will reach out to you. Anywhere we are is holy ground. What is the Lamb? We now turn to our hymn book as we sing from the English Methodist hymn book, the hymn 157. Jesus calls us all the tumult. The hymn 157. Let us please reach out for our Holy Communion manual. We turn to page one, item number three. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us all please be seated as we take the collect of purity as found on item number four, page one. Let us pray, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our heart by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The commandment of the Lord Jesus page 2, item number 5B. Please let us give the corresponding responses. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And write all these your laws in our hearts, we beseech you. Dear people of God, let us confess our sins to God, as found on item 6, page 3, together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. May the merciful Lord grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. The church will say a resounding amen. amen. We continue in the mood of prayer as we take the collect. I will say it on our behalf. Collect. God, our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your son gave to his church. Nourish us, we pray, by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Let us all please sit right as we take the reading of the scriptures. Please, let's be seated for the first Bible reading, which shall be taken from the second epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 11, from verses 22 to 33. Second Corinthians 11, 22 to 33, read. Are they Jew Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they the ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in the labor, more abundant, in stripe above measure, in prisons more frequently, in debts often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rod. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys, often in pairs of waters. In pairs of robbers. In pairs of my own countrymen. In Paris of the Gentiles, in Paris in the city, in Paris in the wilderness, in Paris in the sea, in Paris among the false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and 
nakedness. Beside the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches, churches who is weak, and I am not weak, who is made to stumble, and I do not burn with indignation. If I must boast, I will boast in the things which concern my infirmity. The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor under the Eretites, the king, was guiding the city of Damascus with garrison, desiring to arrest me, but I was not laid down in the basket through but I was let down in the basket through a window in the wall and escaped from his hand. This is the word of the Lord. What is the lamb? The 13th, please let's be upstanding for the gospel reading. The 13th chapter of the gospel according to St. John. We commence reading from verse 20. The gospel of St. John, chapter 13. We start reading from verse 20. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. When Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Most assuredly I say to you, one of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another, perplexed about whom he spoke. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. Then leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now, after the piece of bread, of bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, what you do, do quickly. But no one at the table knew for what reason he said this to him. For some thought, because Judas had the money box that Jesus had said to him, buy those things we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Having received the piece of bread, he then went out immediately, and it was night. So when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. Little children, I shall be with you a little longer, a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of Christ. Yes, our Lord. We shall sing the hymn 322. Sinners, Jesus will receive. The hymn 322 in the Methodist.
please be seated. Um, today is Holy Thursday, and this was the day where Jesus washes our apostles' feet. So I would like to correct the Bible passage. The Bible passage, there was a typographical error who typed it. It's John 13, 1 to 17. John chapter 13, 1 to 17. There we will read about how Jesus washed his apostles' feet. With that said, let us pray. Father Almighty, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the I am, the I am. We are about to go into your word, Almighty God. Speak your words through me. Don't let me speak my own words. Relay your own message, not mine. At the end, give us understanding and wisdom. Amen. Like I said earlier, it is Holy Thursday. The theme is a life of service. And my text is taken from John 13, 14 to 15. I will read that. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I say, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Now, let us get some facts about Christianity. We are Christians. Who is our role model? Jesus is our role model, if we call ourselves Christians. Where do we get his life and his teaching from? From our Bible. So if you believe in that, Jesus is our role model, and we get our facts from the Bible, then you must do as he has done. I ask myself, why did Jesus do that? What was he trying to tell us? He was teaching us humility. Humility. You know, God does not like the proud. He resists the proud. He wants us to be humble in whatever we do, both at work and in church. Whatever service you render in church, you must do it with all humility. We must not be men pleasers. Ephesians 6, 6 to 7 tells us we must not be men pleasers. When you are doing your work cheerfully, it's not when you see chaplain or you see Reverend or Jeremy Kelly that you start sweeping or you carry your Bible. Whether they are here or they are not here, you must do your work diligently. Whatever you are doing, you must do it diligently. Colossians 3 verse 23 tells us you must do it wholeheartedly. And whatever you do wholehearted, you are not doing unto men. You are doing unto God. Let us remind ourselves, there's a reward at the end of this. There is a reward. And I, I, I tell a short story of, um, I went for a funeral many years back in, um, I do, the former principal of Horsey College died. And when we were talking about him, the reverend father that he had sent to school had now become a reverend father. And immediately, the principal saw him. The reverend father was coming to say thank you. The principal ran to him and knelt down and said, Father, bless me. I can never forget that story. Father, bless me. Because he has become a shepherd of a church. We must be humble. 
don't let us look at the person that is sending us that message. I'm older than the person. Why should the person send me that kind of message? Who do you think you are? After all, I'm older than you. After all, I can give birth. Your shepherd is your shepherd. No matter how young or old. These are the things that Jesus came to tell us. Humility to the Can you imagine Jesus, the son of God? Son of God. Washing mere mortals' feet. He didn't wash the hands. And I asked myself, why not the hands? The hands are cleaner. Why the very dirty feet that he had, they had walked long distance, dusty? Because he had to show us that at times, you are giving jobs that you are not very crazy about. You don't like it. You are in such positions. But you have to do it if you have agreed to do it. You must do it very, very well. Because God is happy and he will reward you. Let's go back to Nehemiah. You know, the interesting thing about Nehemiah is that we are doing Nehemiah 2, 18. Arise, that's our theme, arise and build. Before Nehemiah could go back, he went, he fasted, he prayed. That's in Nehemiah chapter 1. And then in chapter 4, he started seeing obstacles. So when you are doing the work of God, you are going to face challenges. Even in your office, you are going to face challenges. It's a natural thing. But you must forge on. Nehemiah faced so many obstacles. The first time, he ignored Sambalat and Tobiah. He didn't do anything. He just continued with the building. The second time, he realized that they were becoming very dangerous. He armed people. And whilst the work was going on, you are going to hear things like, are you the only one? Why are, they always, are you the only one that is in church? What's so special about you? You are going to ignore it. And you are going to move on. You are going to ignore it. And you are going to move on. Because Exodus 14, 14 tells us, God says, all you have to do is to keep still. I will fight for you. I will fight for you. So when you hear all those things, please don't be discouraged. Just imagine Apostle Paul, somebody that was doing all that work. They pushed him to the point that he got angry. He started boasting in Romans. The first passage, he was boasting. And you know what? He wasn't boasting about how much wealth he has. He wasn't boasting about who he is as, as I, I am uh, the best uh, apostle in the field. He didn't boast about that. He boasted about things that we will never have boasted, how he suffered, how many challenges he faced because he was proud of working for God. And that is where we all must be. Let us limit our boasting. I have 10 degrees. I am a PhD older. I live in 10 mansions. Can you even live in 10 mansions at the same time? It's not possible. You can even in the mansion, can you live in one? Can you sleep on one bed at the same time? Let us see Apostle Paul as an example of what he did. And remember, when you are doing these things, if you refuse to do them wholeheartedly, God will appoint somebody else. Fact of life. Somebody else will take over and will do that job and you will have lost. Somebody else will take over. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10, it tells us that you can only do these things whilst you are alive. When you die, your knowledge, your wisdom, everything has ended on this earth. Ended. So if they are giving you something to do and you are grumbling and you are complaining, remember, if man is 
cannot see what you are doing. There's somebody that is watching you. God Almighty. The man that sees the heart, that sees every move you make, is watching. And you will lose out. Guarantee. You will lose out. So when you have a service to render, render it well. Render with all your heart and do it well. Psalm 27 verse 4, King David asked the Lord for one thing, to live in the Lord's house all his life, to marvel there in his goodness, to ask for guardians. How sweet it is to come to church. Are you happy when you are coming to church? There is joy in all these things. I pray that God gives us the grace to get to that point, that there's an excitement about when you are coming to worship God. There's an excitement about when you are coming to do the work of God. You are not just looking at, oh, what am I going to get? Just do it cheerfully and joyfully. I pray that we get there one day. Another thing that I'd like to say is that um, for us to do the work of God, we must humble ourselves. Let us remember God opposes the proud, but he shows favors to who? The humble. First Peter 5 verse 5. It was pride and envy that killed King Saul. Pride and envy, that's what destroyed him. If he was humble enough to accept David, he was even obedient enough to listen to God, he would never have found himself where he found himself. By the time he realized the Spirit of God was no longer in him, and he was in David, the envy was, was enormous. He hated him up to the point of wanting to kill, and that's what envy does. Whatever little job you do, do it well. Jesus is proud of you. If man is not, Jesus is proud of you. He will reward you. I've given examples of some people in the Bible. I gave example of Nehemiah. I gave example of Paul. Let's come down to earth. There's this particular professor, a Ghanaian professor, anesthesia. When she retired... She went back to Ghana, went to this small church where she was. There, she had to get there early, arrange chairs, everything. You know when she died, they were shocked that she was a professor. They didn't know. They were shocked. She did her work diligently, not minding who is looking not minding her status in the society. They, in fact, when they were too shocked, they said they didn't know, and that she will come and she will arrange. There's another good example I'll set. He's also late soon. The man was a chorister in Falario. He will leave Okokomaiko. I don't know if you know where Okokomaiko is. It's on your way to Lasso. He will go for 8 o'clock service, Every Sunday, 8 o'clock service, 10 o'clock service. Both services. So you can imagine what time he was waking up. But he realized, I have the service to do unto God. I don't want to disappoint myself. Neither do I want to disappoint Jesus. He is my brother. I have to do what is right. And do it well. Let us remember, there is joy in worshiping the Lord. There is joy in doing what he has asked us to do. And like Ecclesiastes 9, 10 tells us, the day we die, whether you are a slave or not, we all face judgment. All of us. And whether we like it or not, one day, we will die. Do we want to be found guilty of not doing what we ought to have done well? Because God has said, we are not doing it unto, him, unto man. We are doing it unto him. 
let us always remember that it is key. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this message, Almighty God. Give us wisdom, Father. We need your wisdom to do what is right. It is not easy because the human flesh can deceive us. But when we have your wisdom and we pray to you, you give us the wisdom and the grace to do what is right and to do your work in the house of the Lord because that is where we find joy and peace. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Brethren, in response to the words we have heard, please let us rise up, our, rise up on our feet as we say the Nicene Creed together. It's on page five of our Holy Communion pamphlet, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us all, and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom we have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please let us take a comfortable position as we pray. We have been taught valuable lessons in humility by the work of our Lord Jesus Christ in washing the feet of the disciples. Let us pray this evening that the Lord will play in us humble hearts hearts that we be submissive to his will and that we do his work not because of the praises to be received or the remuneration but simply out of a heart of gratitude and humility for the love he has for us that made him to sacrifice his only begotten son so that we may live with him eternally. Let's thank him because he has promised through his well-beloved son, Jesus Christ, that when we pray in faith, he will hear us. So let's pray for the church throughout the world that they may be united in Christ for the fulfillment of the mission that has been given to all ministers of the gospel. Let's pray for members of Methodist Church Nigeria and all Christians who confess the name of Jesus Christ, that they may be united in his truth and live together in his love so that his glory may be revealed to the world. Lord, inspire and strengthen our prelate, His Eminence, Dr. Oliver Aliaba, Archbishops and Bishops, using the Archbishop 
Bishop of Lagos, the Most Reverend Dr. Isaac Ayola, we as point of contact, and all ministers of the gospel, gospel using our chaplain, the very Reverend Dr. Ayo Richards, as point of contact, that they may be faithful in the administration of your sacraments. Bless and guide our president, Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinobu, and all governors using Baba Jide Sonwolu of Lagos State as point of contact. Give wisdom to all who are in authority and direct this nation and other nations in the way of justice and peace. Take away from our nation all that tends to divide us, that we may honor one another and seek the common good. Give grace to us, our families, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in humility in one another and love as he loves us. Father, we pray you will comfort those who mourn. You will heal those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. We pray you will give courage and hope to those in troubles and bring them all to the joy of your presence. Almighty Father, this evening we remember those who are sick and we pray that we place your healing hands upon them wherever they may be in Jesus' name. We pray for those who are looking up to you for spouses, our young men and women who are old enough for marriage, but who are scared one way or the other because of some bad examples they have seen or who are yet to find their chosen ones. Father, we pray you will cause them to meet the bones of their bones and the flesh of their flesh in Jesus' name. There shall be wedding bells soon and very soon in the mighty name of Jesus. We also commit those who are heavy with babies into your hands. We pray that on the day of delivery, everything will go smoothly in the mighty name of Jesus. For those who are looking up to you for such blessing, for the fruit of the womb, Lord, grant it unto them. And when next we shall celebrate, they will come forward with their own children in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for our young ones who are looking for jobs. And for those who are in businesses, that you will prosper all in the mighty name of Jesus. Those looking to further their education, Lord, particularly those in the remedial courses in the church right now, we pray, Father, that they will succeed exceedingly well in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we are many, so are the desires of our hearts and the pains and our request meet each and every one of the of us at the point of our needs in the mighty name of jesus may your name alone be glorified forever we remember at this time those who have died in the faith and service of christ grant unto them according to your promises a share in your eternal kingdom we also rejoice in the fellowship of all your saints we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Most merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. We shall sing the hymn 468 in our English Methodist hymn book. The hymn 468, near the to we shall collect the welfare fund during the singing of this year.
take the last verse. of God, let us reach out to our Holy Communion Manual. We turn to page 8. Page 8, the offertory, offertory prayers on top of that page, we shall all say together. Receive, O God, this offering of bread and wine and our arms, representing the fruits of your creation as token of our love. Accept also the offering of our lives that we may serve the cause of your kingdom and fulfillment of your will. The Lord is here. Then lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly, it is right and good to glorify you at all times and in all places, to offer you our thanksgiving, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through your living word, you created all things and pronounced them good. You made human beings in your own image to share your life and reflect your glory. When the time had fully come, you gave Christ to us as the life of the world. He accepted baptism and consecration as your servant to announce the good news to the poor. At the Last Supper, Christ gave to us the Eucharist that we should celebrate the memorial of the cross and resurrection and receive his presence as the bread of life. Therefore, Lord, with the angels and all the saints, we proclaim and sing your glory. We praise you, Lord, King of the universe. 